We're so afraid to go along that we will stay stuck in a situation that we know isn't good for our life. So everybody type this in the chat right now so I know that you get it. Moving on is less about what you're moving on to and more about what you're moving on from, okay? And actually, you know what? Let me flip that. Moving on is more about what you're moving on to and less about what you're moving on from. Either way, either way you can take that quote and you can take that because what I say about moving on to and what I mean by that is sometimes you think you have to have it all figured out before you leave, before you step away, before you move on with your life. No, it's more about where you don't want to be at anymore. It's more about, no, I'm not accepting this pain anymore. It's more about, no, I'm not accepting less anymore in my life. So I'm moving on for that. Second thing I want to tell you, and this kind of sounds contradicting, but don't take it out of context, okay? And write this down in the chat. And then we're going to get into this principle that will change your life when it comes to moving on. And you can watch this from the beginning. You guys that are tuning in, I'm going to save this. You'll be able to watch it from the beginning. You'll be able to watch it on YouTube or on Facebook, however you want to watch it. And you guys can share this as I'm speaking too. Let's get these numbers up. It's 3.2 in here. Let's get it up to 4,000 because people need this message. And I see people in the comment coming to that. Let me tell you this. A lot of times, man, understand this truth. What you focus on is what you feel. What you focus on is what you will feel. What you focus on is what you feed your soul. You see, when we're trying to move on from something, a lot of times we focus on the thing that we're moving on, right? In a negative way. And I want to tell you this. Don't focus on what you're moving on from, but focus on what you're moving on to. So if you have something in your life that you know what you're moving on to, and I'm going to tell you what that is, you're moving on to a better you. You're moving on to a future that has what you deserve. You're moving on to the best version of yourself. You're moving on to healing. You might not know exactly how to do it, but that's what you're moving on to. And I want to tell you to write that in the chat right now. Moving on is not about focusing on what you're moving on from or what you're moving on to, because if you're always focused on that, you will never move forward with your life, right? You'll never move forward with your life. So I know I said things that might be kind of like contradicting, but don't take either one out of context. The first meaning was, listen, I know that there's pain. I'm not staying here no more. I made up my mind. I might not know where I'm going, but I know for damn sure where I'm not staying with my life no more. And the second thing is that I'm not going to pay attention because a lot of people say, man, how do I get over this situation? How do I get over this person? How do I get over this season? And that lets me know that you're trying to get over. It's not about getting over something. It's about understanding your worth more. It's about loving yourself more. It's about understanding what you deserve more. It's not about focusing on getting over someone. Because as long as you're focused on getting over someone or something, if it's a dream or a job for you, you'll never get over it. That thing will control your life. That's why we have so many people that are removed from a relationship, that are removed from a situation, a job, a dream, a sport, that is still controlling their life. It's still controlling their life. So I want you to hold on to those two statements when you think about moving on with your life. Now, here's the kicker. Here's the principle that I want to teach tonight. So I need you guys to share this right now. I need you guys in the chat. I need you guys to like this up. I need you guys to like this. So Facebook can spread this to as many people as that needs to see it. Please understand this truth, y'all. And please stay here for this. Give me five minutes of your time, okay? And that's it, five minutes of your time. And this is something that you have to understand. When it comes to moving on, okay, with our life and how to move on, there's plenty of steps. But there's one step that I want to share with you that I know will change your life when it comes to moving on. Let me know in the comments, are you ready for it? Linda said, you focus on what you feel. There you go, type it away. You focus on what you feel. A lot of times, man, and let me know if you can relate to this. I even know in my life, right? We, as human beings, we either move towards pleasure or we move away from pain. And when we're in situations, when we first try something or when somebody first gives us something, right? We associate that thing with pleasure, right? Maybe it's a relationship. When it first started, it was pleasure. You loved it. It was exciting. They did everything right. You did everything right. It was all gravy. Maybe it was a sport. You loved the sport. It gave to your life. You were great at it. It was all gravy, right? Maybe it was a job. When I first got that job, I was blessed. I loved that job until my boss started tripping until they wouldn't give me a sick day when I was sick. They wouldn't appreciate me, right? But I want you to understand something. You first tied that situation, that person, and you associated that person or that situation with pleasure. Please stay with me on here, y'all. Please 
stay with me here tonight. You tied that person, associated that person to pleasure. Okay, so subconsciously in your mind, every time you think about the situation, subconsciously your brain activates pleasure because that's what you got so much of. You might have got years of pleasure. You might have got decades of pleasure, but that's what your mind associates it with, okay? The problem with associations, as we move forward in our life and as we see the reality of the situation, as things change, we don't change our associations. We keep our associations the same. So even though that situation has given us pain, we still associate it to pleasure. You might say, Trent, that's not the truth. It is the truth. That's why you're so quick to go back to that situation. That's why you're so quick to go back. When somebody gives you a little bit of pleasure, you go back to a situation that you're trying to move on from, or you go back to that, that thing, go back to that environment because you've associated that person or that thing with pleasure. You associated that person or that thing with good, especially if they came into your life and secure your insecurities, make you feel better, helped you heal, all that type of stuff. You misassociate the person. So when they're giving you pain, when it's giving you pain, you don't even realize it because you're so tied subconsciously to what they used to give you. And your mind, your subconscious mind is programmed to feel what they used to give you, not what it really is. And some of us, what we do, even when we know what it really is, even though we know the reality of the situation, and we ignore the reality because some of us, we hope that it goes back to what it used to be. We pray that it goes back to what it used to be. We wish that it goes back to what it used to be. No matter how many signs that we get that it's not going back, we hope that we pray and we wish that it goes back to what it used to be. You've allowed what it was to make you blind to what it is. Do y'all feel me on this tonight? Do you get where I'm going? If you feel this, say amen, say yes, drop a heart, drop a like. Let me know if you understand what I mean by this, because this is what you have to do. In anything in life, y'all, we have habit loops. I call them revolving doors. It's like going back to the same reasons why you left for. We have habit loops, right? We have an emotion that we feel, right? Maybe it's a void, maybe you're lonely, maybe you miss a person, maybe you miss this. Your emotions are valid. And what usually happens is that we wanna do anything uh, to make sure we bring ease to those emotions, to make sure we bring uh, um, a cure to those emotions. So what we do in this habit loop, once we feel lonely, we take an action. And a lot of us, we don't move on because we take the action of going back instead of moving forward. So you have to have a disruptor in your emotional habit loop. You have to have a disruptor in your emotional habit you loop. I used this analogy years ago. If I gave you a cell phone, right? We all can relate to cell phones because we all been addicted to cell phones. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you're addicted. Love is the greatest addiction, okay? People don't talk about it enough. Love is the greatest drug, it's an addiction. So when you're addicted, it's hard to break free from things, y'all. It's not easy. That's why we struggle with this. A lot of us are addicted to our cell phone. If I gave you a cell phone, right? And every time you picked up that cell phone, you had a dopamine hit of pleasure. Every time you picked it up, what a lot of you do, that's why we're addicted to our cell phones. We're gonna always go back to that cell phone. We're gonna always go back to it, no matter how much stress the cell phone brings, no matter how much the screen time prevents our sleep, no matter how much is det detrimental to our mental health at times, no matter how much it disrupts our peace, we're gonna always go back to that cell phone because our brain, our mind, our life associates that cell phone with pleasure. Now just imagine if I gave you that cell phone, right? And for the first time you picked up that cell phone or even the third or fourth time, and every time you picked it up, that cell phone shocked the hell out of you. You picked it up and it shocked you. It electrocuted you. You, you would put it down quick. It, it would only take you a few more times for you to pick it up to realize that that cell phone is not good for my life. You might say, Trent, what does have anything to do with me moving on? Everybody watching this live right now, you have to get very clear on the true association on what you're trying to move on from. So if that situation is pain, you have to feel that pain. 
And I know it hurts to do that, but you got to feel that pain. You got to know every time I go back, I'm going to feel a pain. Every time I go back, I'm going to hurt. Every time I try to hold on to something, it's going to break my heart. Every single time. And so some people might say, well, Trent, what do I do? I'm going to tell you what you do. You got to remind yourself, if somebody abused you, physical abused you, and they keep calling your phone, you have to write in your phone, black eye, abuse, narcissist. So every time your phone ring, you remind it of what it really is, not what it was. If it's a sport that you're trying to go back to that you know it's not good for your life, you got to tell yourself that this is not going to help my future anymore. That is over. I got to create a new normal in my life. You got to create a vivid picture. If it's a friend that's toxic and you know they're toxic, change their name from Karen in your phone to toxic. So every time they call, it reminds you of what they really are to your life. And I'm not saying people can't change because people change. I've had my toxic days, I'm sure. And I've changed. But you got to stop thinking you're going to change the person. So when you put the truth and remind yourself and reprogram yourself on what the situation really is, the reality, it makes it a lot easier. I didn't say easy. It makes it a lot easier for you to move on to a situation. And I'm going to tell you the timeline of moving on really quick. As I get off of here, I'm going to go to Instagram. I'm going to tell you the timeline of moving on. This is how it happens, okay? And I'm going to tell you this. When you make a decision to move on with your life, whatever it's from, you're going to go through a separation anxiety, right? You're going to think, did I make the right decision? The person or thing is probably in your inbox, in your phone, cussing you out, saying you ain't going to ever be nothing without them, all that type of stuff, right? Maybe the friend is spreading gossip and rumors about your name. You're like, damn, I might as well just stay in it if I got to deal with all this. And a lot of people get to that point and they go back. A lot of get, people get to that point and they say, you know what? I'll rather just accept the pain than move on through a pain. What I mean by that, and I want you to ask yourself this question. When you're struggling to move on, when you want to go back to a situation that you know isn't good for your life, ask yourself this, this question. Would I rather stay in a permanent pain for the rest of my life where I know what it is? I know I'm settling for less. I know I'm going to die unhappy. I know I'm going to die settling for less. Or would I go through temporary pain? The pain of being lonely, the pain of you know, anxiety from separation. I'm going to choose the temporary pain that will lead to the healing eventually. I'm willing to go through that journey of, of, of scariness as I move through the journey of healing with my life. But you got to decide that. So this timeline, you go through your separation anxiety, you go through your loneliness. And I'm going to tell you what happens. The best thing that you can do, okay, and I'm cutting this short. The best thing that you can do is to show yourself that you can survive without that situation. You can survive without that friend that's toxic. You can survive without that relationship that's toxic. You can survive without that job that's toxic. Because once you show yourself that you can survive without it, you start to build confidence in your life. Some people in this comment box right now, I'm sure can attest to this. Some people in this comment box right now will tell you, I'm sure. They have stories after stories after stories. Your first step is to show yourself that you can survive without it. And I want to tell you, you can right? You're breathing, you're living life, your heart's beating. You can survive without it. As you continue to work on yourself, as you continue to figure out what loving yourself is all about, as you can figure out who you are instead of who a person wanted you to be, as you get back your own identity, as you start to heal, you know what starts to happen? You start to build a little bit more confidence in yourself. You know what starts to happen? You start to feel a little bit more freer from that person. You know what starts to happen? That person or that thing that used to have so much power over you starts to become powerless. It starts to lose its power. Again, guys, it's not just about relationships. I can tell you my story with football. It starts to become powerless. And that gravitational pull of hurt, that gravitational pull of guilt start to get weaker and weaker and weaker. That gravitational pull of manipulation started to get weaker and weaker and weaker as I started to move forward. It's like a, just imagine a rubber band, right? And as you stay connected, that rubber band is strong. But as you continue to pull, 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 pull away from that situation, what happens to that rubber band? Eventually, that rubber band loses its power and eventually that rubber band will pop. And it might be a sting for a short moment. It might be a little hurt for a short moment, but eventually that hurt fades and you are free, my friend. 
And as you continue to move forward with your life, as you continue to heal, as you continue to work on you, as you continue to understand what your worth is all about, self-worth method, as you continue to take that, pun intended, that is an intentional drop, <laughs> you know what starts to happen? You move from surviving to thriving. You move from surviving to thriving. And you look back and you realize like, damn, why was I praying for God to bring that situation back in my life? Like, damn, why was I praying and crying and begging for that boss to give me a, a, a raise and give me a promotion at that job, at that environment that was so toxic? Like, damn, why was I angry at God for allowing me to, to lose sports or to lose that dream when, man, I'm a lot freer now. And you start to look back and you realize that your life is better off without it. And my friends on here, the people that be treating people like crap, I'm gonna tell you something. When a person realizes that their life is better off without you, they ain't coming back. When a person realizes that they got more peace without you, they ain't coming back. When a person realizes that their, their soul is a lot lighter without you, they ain't coming back. And that's the goal. And this is just a brief part of moving on, y'all. Like, self-worth method, I'll talk about this deeper, but this is just one step. If you can remember those two things we talked about at the beginning, if you can remind yourself of this, remind yourself of the association. How can I associate that person, thing, situation with the truth? What is it really? What am I staying blind to? What is my hope keeping me blind to? What am I holding on to that doesn't exist anymore? You know, sometimes the hardest thing in life, and can I get an amen with this, man? Can I get some hearts from this? Can I get some likes buttons on this? Hit the like button with this one if you feel this, man. Because it's not easy. You know, sometimes the hardest thing in life is realizing that what you're holding on to just doesn't exist anymore. Sometimes the hardest thing in life is realizing what you're holding on to just doesn't exist anymore. Sometimes the hardest thing in life is what you're hoping for will never go back to how it used to be. And when you understand, man, that everything isn't meant to last forever, when you understand that the future has your healing, when you understand that you will survive from it, no matter how long you've been in it, and it's about reprogramming your subconscious mind with the truth, and it's about giving your life what you need and creating experiences with your life, moving on becomes a lot easier. Moving on becomes easier when you focus on what you're moving on to instead of what you're moving on from. Moving on becomes a lot easier when you understand that the only closure you need is realizing that you deserve better. Moving on becomes a lot easier when you understand that the only closure you need is realizing that you deserve better. Some of us, we stay stuck in pain. We stay stuck in hurt because we're waiting on closure. We're waiting on understanding. We're waiting on apology. We're waiting on closure. And this is another truth bomb. I'm giving you guys some truth bombs tonight. It must be the stars aligned. Sometimes in life, it's hard when you realize that you have to close a chapter without closure. Sometimes in life, it's hard when you realize that closure means that you have to close a chapter without understanding. But as you realize and live life, and I'm sure thousands of you on here tonight can get in this chat, and I hope that you write in this chat how true this is, 
that you realize that all the closure that you needed was just moving on with your life. And it all made sense when it didn't make sense. There was all a bigger picture when it seemed like there wasn't gonna be one. I love you, I appreciate you. And healing isn't an overnight process, y'all. Moving on isn't an overnight process, y'all. It's not. It's a lifelong process for somebody. It's an overtime process for a lot of us, for most of us. So don't think because you hear this today, tomorrow you feel like, oh man, the rubber band should be pop. Sometimes that rubber band moves a little bit slow as you're stretching it out. But the key is not to allow that rubber band to lose its slack. Keep putting tension, 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 tension on it so it will pop.